unusual polymers, or to be more accurate, polymers with unusual properties. The two principal ones are, first of all, polyethenol. As its name implies, it's going to be a polymer based on a monomer, which is both an alkene, carbon to carbon double bond, and an alcohol, OH, or hydroxyl group. So there's our monomer, ethenol. When this molecule, or when this monomer polymerizes, we get a polymer which looks something like this. Let's put in one or two other monomers. There we are. One more monomer. Now the unusual property that this has is that it's a plastic which dissolves in water. Well, why should a polymer made from these monomers be soluble? Well, let's polymerize this first of all. Addition polymerization. The carbon to carbon double bonds break and the individual monomers join together. Its solubility arises from the fact that it has a hydroxyl group at regular intervals. And hydroxyl groups are polar, highly polar. It's the presence of these charges that makes this polymer dissolve in water. And why should it dissolve in water? Because it has charges. It's because the water itself has charges. Water molecules are polar. And therefore we find that the charges on the polymer are attracted to the charges in the water and hence the polymer dissolves. So that was polyethenol, the polymer which dissolves in water. It has uses such as laundry bags, you put the dirty linen in the bag, you put the bag in the, in the machine, you don't have to remove the linen. Uh, dishwasher tabs where you put the tab in the dishwasher without removing the plastic coating and so on. Another unusual polymer is polyethylene. Now, ethylene, as you might recall, is an alkyne. It has a carbon to carbon triple bond. It's conventional, it's normal to drop ethylene like that. But when we're going to polymerize these ethynes to produce polyethane, it's probably better to draw the ethane monomer like this. Let's draw some other ethane monomers. When we polymerize these, we'll get a polymer. Let's see what the polymer looks like. Now, Normally, we're going from a double bond to a single bond. In the previous example, we ended up with single bonds of what were our monomers. Here, however, because we begin with a triple bond, the triple bond breaks, the individual monomers join together, and we have a polymer which is still unsaturated. It contains carbon to carbon double bonds. Now, what unusual property does this have? Well, surprisingly, it's a polymer which is able to conduct electricity. It might be worth looking to see why it conducts electricity. We have here alternating double and single bonds. Now, you may not know, but in a double bond, each carbon atom has what's called an orbital. It's where an electron is found. So we have a double bond where each carbon atom has an electron. Now we have a single bond. Now we have another double bond, and once again, each of the carbon atoms has an orbital where, where an electron is found. The consequence is this, is that when we have alternating double and single bonds, these electrons are free to move. They're said to be delocalized. And as you may recall, delocalized electrons, which are what are found in metals, allow metals to conduct electricity, and this can likewise conduct electricity. So polyethylene is the polymer which conducts electricity, and it's because it has these delocalized electrons. It's worth looking at something further like this, and that is benzene. You might recall benzene as C6H6. It used to be the case that people would draw benzene as if it had alternating double and single bonds. Benzene does not have this structure. That is wrong. Benzene does not have this structure. Because if it did, it would react with bromine. All these carbon to carbon double bonds 
would mean that the benzene molecule would happily react with bromine. However, you notice we have alternating single double, single double. Just as in this case, it kind of merges, and instead of you can't really tell where the double bond ends and the single bond begins. It becomes a blur. It's the same in benzene. We don't have distinct double and single bonds. They tend to merge. What we have instead is an in-between structure. And just as in the example we have here, where we have delocalized electrons, benzene has delocalized electrons. Which raises the question, can benzene conduct electricity? No, because in this case, the delocalized, delocalized electrons are trapped within the ring. So, what have we said so far? We've spoken about two polymers with unusual properties. Polyethanol, the one which dissolves in water because it's highly polar, and polyethane, the polymer which conducts electricity because it delocalize electrons. There are two or possibly three other polymers worth mentioning here. One of them is polyvinyl carbazole. You don't need to know its structure. The only thing you need to know is this is the one which conducts electricity when light is shone on it. You don't need to know why it is able to do that. It has a use in photocopiers. Polyvinyl carbazole, a polymer which conducts when the electricity falls on it, when light falls on it. And another one that's worth mentioning is biopol. There's a clue in the name. Biodegradable polymer. So it does what it says. It tends to rot, it tends to disintegrate rather rapidly in the environment. It's a biodegradable polymer. It has uses in carrier bags. If carrier bags are badly disposed of, they will slowly, rather rapidly, disintegrate. One final polymer is Kevlar. And although um, it doesn't really fall into the remit, Kevlar is well known for being an extremely hard polymer. It's used to make hard hats, bulletproof vests, spacesuits, kayaks and so on. So there it is. Polymers with unusual properties.